Today, we're going to be looking at Matthew Pavon's swing, the first Frenchman to win since 1921. We're going to be breaking down his swing, looking at some of the key matchups that helped him get the W at Torrey Pines. All right, so we had a lot of really good feedback from our Nick Dunlap analysis last week, so we're going to keep it going. And the goal of these exercises is to look at the unique qualities of each winner and figure out how they match their swing up and how they have success at the highest level. I think as a coach, you're always kind of prone to fall in victim of your own biases. So I think this is a great exercise to continue to be open-minded of different people playing the game different ways. Last week, a lot of people emailed in asking if I could analyze your swing at home. We can definitely do that. So we made it super easy this week. If you want your own personalized analysis, be sure to click, click the link below and we'll get you taken care of. Okay, so starting with the face-on view, I think uh, he has a pretty good setup from the face on view. So left shoulder is over the left hip, right shoulder is lower than the lead shoulder. It's gonna put the spine in a pretty neutral condition. He has a little bit of foot flare, I wouldn't say a ton. Uh, he's also hitting a short iron here, so I don't think he's really gonna be cranking back as much as he would on a driver. Elbow alignment's pretty good, typically where I like to see him, maybe a little bit back with the lead. And then obviously he has a trail elbow at the right rib cage, so really like that. His lead hand grip, I would say, is neutral to strong, so I can see two, maybe two and a half knuckles in there. Two knuckles, I would classify that as a neutral left hand. Three knuckles, I would classify that as a strong left hand. And then his right hand V points up at his right shoulder, okay? So I would classify that as a neutral right hand or trail hand. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how he manages the club face with that grip as he moves through his swing. Now, down the line view, some similarities and some differences from Nick Dunlap, okay? So first off, the similarities are, you'll see his arms hang back a little bit. So the humerus hangs back. And what that's gonna do is make the hands end up a little bit closer to the pelvis at address. So there's less space between the hands and the pelvis. It's gonna be interesting to see how he manages that. Uh, last week, Nick, had his arms move outside pretty quickly in a takeaway. Um, so we'll wanna keep an eye on that as we move through the swing. Now, a difference in the setup is he has a lot more curve in his lumbar spine, okay? So remember what we talked about last week. If that lumbar spine is more on the neutral side of the spectrum, that's a sign that the pelvis is in a neutral condition, okay? And that's gonna give much more room in the hip joints to actually turn. But because he does have more arch in that lumbar spine, we can maybe hypothesize that he's set up with a little bit more of an anterior tilt. So maybe the belt buckle is down a little bit. Not recommended for most golfers because that will limit how much you can actually turn in each hip, especially that trail hip uh, for backswing purposes. All right, so starting with the takeaway, I'm a big fan of how Matthew triggers the club. It's the same sequence that we see from Phil Mickelson, John Rahm, DJ, all these really good players. And I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record talking about this, but I think it's really important to starting the swing uh, with some energy. You can see right here, he's loading a little pressure on his lead side. Okay, so right there, we see a little pressure on his lead side. And then what he does is he creates a lateral push towards the target, which starts to move his body away from the target. Okay, so let me play that for you just so you can kind of see that. So pushes and then body moves away, okay? The corresponding move is the hands are reacting by creating a forward press, okay? So you can see kind of as he pushes to his trail side, the hands are actually moving towards the target. And this is something that I think people talk about a lot, the forward press, but they don't realize that uh, to do it correctly, it needs to be created by the feet. And then the hands are just reacting to the forces the feet are actually creating and the sequencing of it. So super important there, I really like that. Now, if I put some lines on his pelvis and his head, what we'll see is we're gonna see his head move pretty quickly towards the target, okay? And the counter of that is as that moves quickly towards the target, we're also gonna see some lateral swaying of the pelvis away from the target, okay? Now, I would directly correlate this to the arch he sets up with at address, okay? So I would say, his lumbar spine is maybe a, a little extended there. The result of that is as he moves to the top, 
I would say he's maybe a little extended at the top. So the because he's starting in some extension, the rates happen too quickly. And the byproduct of that is you're not going to create a big shoulder turn. Okay, so you can see his, his shoulder turn isn't as big as most people. Now, I know he's only hitting a short iron here, but there is a correlation there. The other thing that we see from the down the line view with that movement is we're going to see the hands work more out in the backswing. Okay, so as he moves back into his backswing, you can see the hands work out just like Nick Dunlap last week. And remember the correlation to the setup from last week. So because that arms are back a little bit, watch the lead arm have to work around the chest to create some space. Okay. He continues to go back. We know he's moving towards the target from the face on view. The result is that left arm parallel, his hands are a little bit more outside. Okay. And what I would do to gauge that is if I put a line roughly on the center of his chest, you can see his hands end up on that side of it. Okay. Typically what that means is the left arm at the top is going to be a little bit higher than the shoulder line. That's not a problem. Uh, we've seen a lot of really good players play from there. Um, so if I draw a line in his shoulders, you can see uh, the left arm is above that line. Okay. Now, the other thing that we pointed out last week is when those hands move up vertically, the shaft is going to balance itself by laying off a little bit more. Okay. So the thing about pitch of the shaft at the top of the swing is we want to make sure it doesn't get too laid off because if it gets too laid off or too shallow at the top, it will typically steepen very late in the downswing. So we'll want to pay close attention to that um, as he gets down to like P6, P6 and a half. Now, even though he's high at the top, I think he does a great job of rerouting the club. Okay. So what we start to see is we start to see the hands actually drop down a little bit. So he, he can see they kind of move up and then they move down a little bit. So at P five in the downswing, um, it's pretty much the same position that he was going back. Okay. So hand path went up a little bit more outside and then he basically rerouted him down in that direction. Okay. Now, the thing I like about his swing is I do like that there's a lot of rotation in his pelvis. So I think he does a good job getting his lower body open. You can see at P5, knees are pretty square, which is um, sort of the gauge of what I determine if a pelvis is open in time or not. And from the face on view, the other thing that we see a little bit different than Nick Dunlap is if I draw a line in his left hip, okay, Nick pretty much stayed inside of that. Okay. So we didn't see him break through this line this way. Okay. With Matthew, we see a little bit more of a lateral motion. Okay. So we see that left hip getting out ahead of him. Okay. Anytime we see that left hip going this way. Okay. We're going to see the spine actually tip back. Okay. So you can see lateral movement of the pelvis tips it back. Okay. And in my opinion, that's one of the things that actually helps him go from having a left arm that's too high to making sure that that club is dropping down enough to where the path isn't too far left. So you can see right through this motion here, I would say the club is moving through the form. So it's not too far to the left, but we do see the club tip out a little bit right there. Okay. So this is where I was talking about the shaft being too laid off at the top. Typically what happens is now the shaft will, will tip out very late in the downswing. Okay. And the result of this is typically the path will get pulled a little bit more to the left. Okay. So if we look at the direction his ball is starting, you can see it's a pretty significantly left start line based off where the stick is pointing. So I would assume he hits a cut. I'm not sure if anyone watching this video knows, please leave a comment below. Let us know uh, what his ball flight is. But that's the result of having that shaft a little bit more in that laid off position up here. Okay, so we're, we're going to see it uh, tip a little bit later in the swing. Now, last thing I wanted to look at was just the club face relationship. Okay, so obviously, you know, I'd say he's a pretty neutral grip at address. He goes back. Okay. Pretty good, I think. Pretty square face there. So face is matching the spine angle. 
Okay, I like that. He goes to the top, okay? Pretty much maintaining the same cup that he starts with at address, okay? So we see a, a, a little cup, just a little bit in that lead wrist, and I'd say we maybe see just a little bit at the top. So, you know, pretty neutral face. You know, my preference is I like to see the face pointing up a little bit more. But that makes sense. I mean, if we think about this, with his path being more left, okay, he can't have a face that's super closed. If it's super closed with a left path, he's gonna hit a big pool, which is probably not desirable. You know, I, it looks like he's starting balls a little bit left and maybe having a little bit of a fade on it. So that's the matchup there is, you know, he, he's definitely not closed at the top. I'd say he's maybe square or maybe even a little bit of an open side, but that matches up with a left path, okay? So yeah, so it's just interesting like looking at how he's setting up and then how he's maneuvering it throughout the swing. One thing that I just kind of noticed is he does have high rate of closure. So he can kind of see through impact. There is decent amount of rotation on this face. So, you know, I think a lot of that would be correlated to the fact that his pelvis is moving laterally for a long time. So as he continues to move laterally, Okay, it's going to be a little bit harder uh, to continue to rotate and the lack of rotation is going to increase that rate of closure. Now, once again, uh, this is someone that just won on the PGA Tour and this is something that I see the average golfing population being obsessed with. Okay, so I saw see a lot of people working on their swings. They see this club face position on the left and they basically, it drives them crazy and they try to change it. But it's important to understand that it's just a byproduct of what happens earlier. So overall, I think it's a very matched up swing. Like, you know, looking at it in depth, I understand why it works at a high level. It's definitely a swing that I think would be harder to teach uh, to the average person. You know, when I look at his swing, it has a lot of similarities to like a Colin Montgomery. You know, definitely not a pattern I would expect someone to bomb it from. But, you know, obviously the guy just won. If I'm him, I'm taking this swing to the bank and, and cashing in. So congratulations, Matthew, on getting your first win on the PGA Tour.